<clears throat> Yo, hello, Adam. I hope the microphone is working, I think. Checking the volume access. <clears throat> Before I start a campaign, <clears throat> what I'm currently trying to do is to, to remodel one of the crocodiles to get it uh, tried as a combat ship. Or perhaps expand one of those to carry six missiles at the same time. Yeah, that should work, I think. It's doing that bug thing where there's no part is connected. <clears throat> so I, I was actually trying to do stream um, Reddit Redemption, but it sort of failed to capture a mouse pointer. And I couldn't fix it, so I'm like, hey, this isn't my fleet. <clears throat> no, one second. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, I've looked at Borrowed Trauma. It, it looks good, then. I wouldn't say it looks good. Like, the gameplay concept is good. But something is off putting you off is the, the, is, is the way the icons are drawn. Like, it looks too hand-painted and too grim all the time. Like, every single tile, every face, everything is super grim and evil and, and slick with oil and all that. Like, it should balance out the colors a bit more. Like, the art style is a bit of, I think, problematic. But I think the concept is really good. Oh, it's 75% off. Hmm. Like, I think I got it like a long time ago. Uh, when was that? But I refunded it after I was playing. Like, I like the concept, but it's not something I wanted to play too much. Hmm, let's look at the price here. 1500 4000 Oh, wait a minute. I could save some cash if I remove all the, wait a minute, if, if I remove the <clears throat> 500 less per missile. I think High Fleet is a more complete game, I would say like, a, like Bartram is an agri-access game where the developer just develops uh, as long as uh, so much money is going to get. But High Fleet was like, completely built to one guy. And then it was released. And I think it, it, it led to higher quality of the game. The question is here, 
should I expand? Um, I could throw out, I could save like a few bucks if I remove the R3s and just put 6K H15s in it. Well, I could make six R3s, but then again, they're not really good against, they're only good against park targets. <clears throat> yeah, I'll try this one like that. Because you also got to account for that every game at some point gets boring. I think most games do, and then... Like High Fleet, I could play for months before it. Hey, Dimitri. Um, two guys and a bunch of freelance artists. Yeah, my guess was that it was one programmer, and he basically bought in some extra graphics, because programmers usually are not really people who draw a lot. So it's actually two guys. Because the, the the developer name just says one name, it's it's Konstantin Koshutin. And I can squeeze in a small aircraft carrier. <clears throat> okay, same procedure as usual. Um, remodeling the Sevastopol a tiny bit. Also, I think there's a new Tarkov trailer coming out tonight. At, is it 10 p.m. Moscow time? Was it Moscow time or something else? And my guess it's going to be a new map or something and a patch coming next week with some stuff in it. But what we really got to do is do something about the full auto recall because most guns are, you can't use them in full auto, like beyond five meters. Okay, radar is gone. Okay, H15 is removed. I'm expecting from the uh, three extra missiles on the, <clears throat> on the crocodile, which will help me with some strike groups. Wait, I could put it actually a bit higher because I don't need the missile thing over here anymore. So I'll just... No. Should it be fly? I'll just go this way. I can throw in some armor piercing, armor protection thingies rather here. Put some extra code up here. Just protecting the main engine because if those things fail, the ship is gone. Okay, setting those, setting that. <clears throat> So it's nice to build a Sevastopol at the beginning of the campaign. All the anticipation of the things can go wrong. <laughs> Not like last night. Okay, she's somewhat in combat shape. Over here, I need to put some armor piercing. Not armor piercing, armor protection in. Press exit, okay, the Sevastopol. Some basic fuel. Yeah, this should go well.
Look, there's a temperature going down. It's getting nighttime. <laughs> Actually getting quite cold. It was up here at like 40 degrees. And in the desert, it gets really night at, uh, really cold at night. It's a really interesting detail that almost has no gameplay implications that you can notice, but they still put it in like that. I think that's the trigger for the strike groups to come in this area. Far northwest of us, so friendlies over here, or map probably here. Should be crazy. Yeah, that feels good. <laughs> okay. for a moment here. He actually hit me with a bomb. Oh, come on. And I'm ramming... Oh, this is going really bad right now. Like in those movies where the hero screws up at the beginning. Just... Come on, how, how much does it take to kill one ship? The enemy has been destroyed. Ah, I almost lost the ship. Okay, get the ammunition. <clears throat> This went quite well. Okay, only one cruise missile came in, which means there's a strike group in the area, but it doesn't have much firepower. That was a gigantic screw up. How is it a landing pad? Come on, guys, that, that's just. I think the chief engineer who, who built the landing pads, he was probably, his wife was, was the sister of the guy who owned the city and that's why he couldn't get fired or something. Because, I mean, look at this, come on. <laughs> okay. Easy now. Come on, come on, come on. No, 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 no. Yeah, we're going to cancel this landing. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> now, the strike group probably came from this direction. The anti-aircraft bombs, some extra ammo from that. Geez, some not enough cash here. Stacking the firepower on the Sebastopol. Oh, and repair again.
Come on, show me what you got. Get a strike group going back home. Okay, the mean stay up parked. I'm going to check what he has. I could chop him apart with a Sevastopol. Or I could send in some missiles right now to fix him in place and They're going to get two R three, so then I'm going to soften up and go with the Sevastopol. Okay, they got good air defenses. Ah, oh, that's beautiful. Okay, so the damage and fixed in place. How many hours does he need? Five hours only for that repair. One ship is damaged. They're just rearming, I think, the missiles. Because the dead ship that's completely dead doesn't get repaired. Should I expend another missile, send planes, or just send this Vastapol in with, with all this stuff? Yeah, I'll go straight for it. Damn it, I don't have the fuel for that. Means I'm going to send him in with. I won't get the loot from it, but at least I take out a strike group. Because they expanded the anti aircraft stuff. Okay, he should be dead after 750 kilos of bombs dropping on his roof. Like, that should be over for him. <laughs> At least now it's safe to send in the main planes. <clears throat> I think the Taranto, that's the only thing that's left on the strike group. Those things are annoying. They shoot their strike cruise missiles and then they kamikaze attack you like with almost nothing on them. They're like zombies. I'm just going to finish them off with planes and then planes ready okay here we go didn't replenish the anti-aircraft missiles I hope they pick different targets this time Yeah, the last one showed him. Was it the Taranto? I think it was the Taranto. Yeah, I'm going to presume that Shrek group is dead because the Taranto is gone. This could, I could actually directly attack, attract the strike group, shoot the mist, have them shoot the mist at me, and fight back with no missiles. Yeah, I'd probably do that. I'm going to provoke them with a the Sevastopol on purpose. Thermal signature Should be easy to do, yeah.
And the chip is heavy. I think like, it's the, the custom configuration of the chip, like the, the base configuration, I think it's um, so it can barely fly itself. And I put extra guns on it, so it, it starts getting too heavy. Okay, crew protection. Intercepted and communication mentioned Tarkan ships northwest of Kalama. Northwest of Kalama. So, yeah, that's probably where they spotted us. Yeah, it's just the, the printout of, of what we saw here. I'm running out of money over here, that's not good. <clears throat> yeah, I think I need those two for protection. Oh, that sweet Moloch, that would look nice on my Sebastopol, but I need money for... I need money for fuel, so I have to sell it. this <clears throat> hmm, just up here well actually I can ask those guys to give me some cash Get some more. Because I'm going to use them as the first line of defense if missiles are incoming. Because I feel it's more reliable to shoot them down with the with the interceptor planes than with the yeah, anti-aircraft systems. One eighty six, two hundred seven. No, I don't, I'm not in range to get him. Oh, is he stupid enough to fly in this direction? Wait a minute. Oh, he's gone already. Okay, I keep the provocation going with the Sevastopol. Because if I track one strike group, I can eat the missiles, I can, I can deflect them. Then close, get close range and chop it apart. If it's two, it gets critical. With three, I'm dead. But I don't think three at the same time are going to stack up on me. <laughs> One on eighty. that thing get through this is annoying like this small ship should be dead much sooner 
What really irritates me if they're above you and they shoot a swastle from above and you get all those expensive missile racks getting damaged. That, that's really the most annoying thing about this. <clears throat> Oh, they also cause some not like that new. Um, this is like this this new nuclear weapon that that um, that Russia showed off. It also calls some not. Did I get the part? Uh, probably not. Did I? No. No, she doesn't fit on those two. Have to. Okay, we need some serious fuel over here. Hey, Waffles. The thing is about Bard Farmer, it's, um, <clears throat> I think the concept is great. I like the sensor system, because it's so nice, like beautifully animated and all that. As I said, the, the art style is really dragging it down for me. Like it, it's that dirty, greasy everything, and, and it's poorly lit. Like they're making every single object in the game look as evil as the monsters that, that, that swim around. And that's a problem, I think. Yeah, I tried that last night, uh, yesterday. I'm not sure if you watched the part where I put a six barrel 180 on the on the, uh, on the honey badger variant. It didn't work out well because in most situations it the salvo missed and the enemy fired too many shots back at it. Oh yeah, I like this one. I'll throw away that junk. And repair this gentleman to fighting shape. So the friend has to be up here. Yeah, I'm burning up too much fuel here. Don't have enough fuel to get up here, which means I have to sell something again. What can I sell? Yep, here we go, selling our alien systems to pay for fuel. <laughs> yeah, I think Sama is a double barrel one, and yeah, I think Squad is a six barrel one. The problem with ammo, if it's outside the ship, something explodes and it's gone instantly. But the thing about what Bautron would want to say is um, it, it's if you have a certain... People often let, let, let their preconceptions about something creep into what they're doing. An example is, for example, if you watch World War II movies, and you watch World War II movies about something in Eastern Europe, like, some, like when the war in Russia happened between Germany and, and the Nazis, and no, between Germany and the Russians and Germans being the Nazis. I just uh, got confused with the numbers here. So anyway, um, <clears throat> if you watch a Russian movie, a modern Russian movie, like made in the last 10 years or something, against a German or a American-made movie about the same topic, what you will notice is that in American or German movies, the sky is always gray, and there's always heavy color correction to make it grayer than it actually is in real life. But if you watch a Russian movie, you have the same violence and brutality of combat, but the sunlight is beautiful, shining on the snow, and the, the grass is green, and all the colors are beautiful. 
And that appears to be because um, when a person thinks about the location or a place or some event, their preconceptions about it get amplified and unconsciously it gets into the way they work, they design it. That's why you always have Western movies, something about Russia, it's always, the weather's always bad, it's always, they apply extra color correction to make it look even gloomier. And I think that's the problem with, with Bartram. It's a submarine sim on a, on a hostile moon with, with those evil monsters and darkness and all that. So they make the monsters evil and look dark and grimy. But the problem is the submarine shouldn't look like that. And I think that's the problem with the, with the art design of the game. Okay. We got enough fuel. We're somewhat repaired. Yeah, I can repair it more. It's a bit too dangerous to provoke them with a source support because if the strike groups they can, don't come from this funnel, they can actually from can come from any direction here. Then um if I get caught by two or three at the same time, that's bad. I think a freighter just uh got away or try to get away. Oh no. I forgot about the guy above, but... See, that's why I got a double armor coat on top. <laughs> Armor's basically built around my place, though. And we didn't get spotted, of course. Uh. No, too lazy to land it right now. We got friendlies northeast. <clears throat> this guy gets some good repairs. Okay. Friendly far northwest of Cuba. So it has to be here, here. No, it's probably here if it's far northwest. Or maybe even here. No, I read it wrong. It's east. It has to be this area.
Oh wait, I still have a problem with the fuel. <laughs> no money for fuel here, come on. Yep, give me some cash, bro. Something catches fire here. Oh, my flare launcher is defective. Ah, oh, come on. My ammo compartment is hit. Oh, I gotta leave. Like, how did he survive my constant barrage of fire? That's just stupid. Come on, get up, get up, get up. Chasing me. Attention. Visual contact. Okay, this is turning into problem. <laughs> yeah. Well. Come on, dodge it, dodge it, dodge it. I think it was one of those uh, proximity warheads. It actually flies much faster without all the extra weight. <laughs> like an elegant sports car. <clears throat> Attention. I'll be so fast I can dodge it. Come on, come on, and dodging. <clears throat> okay, that situation should be much cleaner, but... Okay. Probably got a strike up looking for me, and... Yeah. Yeah, I'll just play dead for a moment, see where the strike up's coming from. You're flying back home, huh? See what you got. It's a regular one. 
I know where you guys are, so... I don't have enough fuel to chase him now with my own group. But I could fire those missiles, damaging them enough so their cruise missiles won't hit. But I have to be rearmed while I'm re reloading over there. Hey, David. Yeah, I wasn't actually streaming for like five weeks, didn't have much time for it, so... I have a bit of time in trying it out. Oh, look, the nice blue glow. And they probably landed by now, firing the last one. Because the damage on the strike group is not permanent, that they'll kill it off completely, so I'm just buying myself time. Yes. Now, a completely dead ship is good because now they have less capacity to carry cruise missiles around. You know, point landing that manually. Money for fuel, so I might actually have to sell something here. I actually actually have to sell this one because it's going to take me many, many hours to repair it and it's going to drag around all the fuel, which I can't afford right now, so yeah, screw it, I'll sell one. I just refuel and repair a tiny bit. And let me take this record. Question is how long it's going to take them to rearm the anti-air missiles they got. I'm going to go straight for it now. I'm going to soft them up with some bombs and then send in the main fleet. Just the garrison, the strike group just left. But I've seen him leave, so that's a good thing I can send him on it. You guys, take him out. I'd rather get the loot from them, but then again, uh, at least I got the bombs off. Last two planes here, one bomb is still going. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes! It was probably riding the bridge or something. <laughs> okay, I lost two planes, took out one ship, this one was damaged, so he's slow enough to get caught. I could send those guys to finish him off. I can find him. Because I need to it be completely dead, so I know it's it's off the board as a strike group. Okay, that's just come on. My guess is he won't make it to the next base if he's damaged enough. I might get a message on the main screen where it says something strike group. In any case, it's flying probably to Osh. Warning, radar emission detected. Yeah, it's probably him. Is that a same strike group? Yeah, it's the same strike group. Has to be. 
I mean, I peeled off the missile racks. What else did I get? And it appears those guys do not, the negative cruisers don't have cruise missiles. It's good to know. That, that just lit up all the expensive sensor systems. <laughs> Why does he have so many missiles left? I think he yeah, killed most of the wreck. Notice like he's aiming the armor piercing rounds and he stopped shooting when I hit him. How oh, did I get him? I think the bridge probably burnt down. Hey Gordon. Look at all that loot. I just sold one of my damaged ships to buy fuel, now I can finally afford something. Okay, <clears throat> let's play this. Uh... Attention, visual contact. Uh, it's probably just a garrison. You gotta be careful, they can still be the. Uh, that, that's dangerous here. Two missiles each. Yeah, they're dangerous. They got two, four, six, and what's that? Six or five, eleven missiles at least on them. But I can lose that fight if I screw it up. I'm still in the race, but it's getting critical with the engine. Uh, wasn't too clean, I guess. So yeah, that's record is gone. Hey, the um, thing is with armor piercing ammo, like for my personal playstyle, um, I never buy special ammo in most cases because I usually waste too much ammo missing the shots. How many strike groups did I get so far? I got two of them. Yeah, he's probably right on top of me somewhere. Let's send somebody to take a look. No, 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 you don't move, you stay. Here we are. Check what those guys have. Two negative cruisers, they end up cruise, they have four cruise missiles. So I have to take or at least damage them before they get to me, which means I have to risk the planes now. Now the question is, can those missiles take out the ship anti-missiles that come at my thing? You mean the extra armor coats? Yeah, I usually like to have a lot of armor on my ships. At least one bomb gets through.
That one took heavy damage. A Swastopol, I think, can take him out, but... I think armor is always useful to have. Because in, in large ship combat, there's a constant rain of projectiles coming at you, and they find gaps in your armor, and they, they crash through it. Uh, I got that thermal signature from the ship, but they're not... I don't think they have my exact position. If they have it... The thing is, they're not firing their cruise missiles yet. That, that's weird. Why are they not doing that? Okay. Now, Swastopol can probably chop through them. She's almost brand new condition. Well, I want to soft them up, so I'm going to send in the Paladin first. Get in close, fire off the missiles, soak up missiles from them, and retreat from combat. Then the badger, and if it goes too bad, he retreats, then it's lost the Didn't get through Dogger in the same stream, those bad. Come on, engine, go up. Oh, that guy's angry. Look at look at that <laughs> huge stream of armor piercing around. Maybe we can do some good damage before Zwasopo comes in. Okay, there should be the chew up. I cut through that stuff and then he's gone. I <laughs> see that dodge, yeah. I just soften him up for a swastop pull without taking too much damage. Come on. Keeping my distance from the other guy. And now I'm getting through. Yeah, it's looking good here. It would actually be interesting if you play multiplayer. I wasn't paying much attention to the chat because of comment. Is that if you um, have your friends like man different guns on the ship. And it would be a bit more zoomed in. So basically you have some... Like each gunner has its own targeting computer. So it's not like that screen. It's like... Each gunner um, has a much more zoomed in view of his ship, and he gets a targeting radar, which is like his own mini targeting game screen. And only the ship commander gets like that full screen over here. So the gunners actually get a much more narrow uh, targeting view of the game. That would actually be quite fun to have. Okay, my, my left side is too damaged. Yeah, I gotta get out of here. I want this to be damaged, ragged, and just ragging around for. Okay. Here we go. Why is he not cut into pieces? Come on. Oh, it's supposed to be. <laughs> so Asapo comes out, everybody runs away.
So yeah, no, can pay attention to chat again. I was too focused. <clears throat> yeah, the problem with the badger is I think it, it's well armored and it's a bit, I think, over armored for fighting garrison. If I fight large ships, as you see, it gets chewed up really quickly against Boris. So I need something like a Bore or something between a Sevastopol and a honey badger, something bigger with more firepower. Then again, I had that. It was a honey badger with seven, eight, 130 guns, which was like 80, 90,000. Uh, I could bring that back in, but then I can only have one badger. Because the current st uh, strategy is find enemy strike groups and take them out with cruise missiles, planes, and the Sevastopol in direct combat after they shoot up. And all the other ships around the Sevastopol are just for garrisons most, most of the time. Hmm. But it's another strike group down, so yeah, it's not going too bad. I mean, I have this, this 90,000 something badger, which um, sort of fit in that role, I think, in some way. Because it has, I think, 830 guns on them, and that's a huge solve of that fires off. But then I noticed I had to remove from the Sevastopol a lot of money and stuff to, to keep the fleet going weight wise. And then I often notice that Sevastopol was underpowered when it gets pressed into combat, because at some point the Sevastopol has to fight. And my recent tactic is use the Sevastopol more in a fighting role. Like, don't strip the armor away. Use it in close combat. Yeah, this guy can't land like that. It's just... Make a lot of fuel because it's a fuel storage, so I don't care <clears throat> how much it's going to be. Now, this guy I want to put on the Sebastopol. Let the Sebastopol get some repairs. And. We mix in this gun, put it up here. Because that requires some ammo boxes, which will be put. Don't have many evac parts, so that's a luxury we don't we can't afford right now. And this guy actually gets some um, Yeah, I have to do something. I mean probably have to camp a while for you to get this ship halfway in, re in repair shape. And that's I think the uh, problem I just noticed. If that's just a garrison fighting ship, if it takes so much damage in a fight and I have to drag it around for three or four battles without actually being able to fight it, then it's just a hunk of metal eating fuel. So maybe I need some more scaled down ships that's more scaled down for garrison and something bigger on the other end for, for flagships. If the money is not too tight for that. And I need to buy myself some planes really soon. But yeah, I took out three strike groups, so that's good. Or a completely new design, as a flag, like something like a, almost a flagship, like a Bore, like something that that can fight flagships, or at least um, strike group ships and kill them fast. Yeah, that's the point. Uh, but the thing is, I got more damage from the uh, money from the loot, so I can afford it right now. I think the pressure from other strike groups is a bit lower because three of them are already dead. So basically, I traded some metal of mine against their metal. I think it's going slightly better, like not too much, but hey. <laughs> and my strategic options are limited. I got no missiles. My planes are mostly damaged. Anybody else is excited for the talk of trailer tonight? I wonder what it's going to reveal. And the thing is, why are they putting a trailer out in Friday evening? Maybe they're going to do some surprise patch release on the weekend, or maybe it's just going to be next week.
Yeah, it's taking too much time to repair. The, the thing is, uh, I think I can afford it sort of because the lower half of the map is somewhat under my control. Yeah, check Romani, it almost works for me. <clears throat> okay, repairs almost done. They're probably attracting a huge amount of strike groups right now. Just a bit closer, come on, just a bit closer. Far north east of Cuba. Might be friendly up here, might be friendly up here, but here I get intel, so I'm probably going to attack that place. But the bad part is I have to actually... Yeah, I gotta get out of here. They always have such perfect timing, like when you're almost done, they come up. Yeah, I know what that means. Okay, now we got those guys. And another one with... Come on, shoot it up, shoot it up. Yes! <laughs> and this guy, come on, get it with your gun. Okay, didn't work out. Sometimes it works, but... Okay, this one didn't work. I think those all missed because it took off early enough. The problem is I have to fight them with the Sebastopol up close. I can go here, mm, directly attack Sebastopol, get friendlies, but the, I'm not sure how large the strike group is. I need to check that. Probably up here. And what you got? Oh, just a garrison. That's weird. He must be in that area. Uh, can't find me. <laughs> Yeah, I'll <clears throat> if it's just a three boring group, I can start chopping them to pieces, but I'd rather go somewhere and buy those stupid missiles again. Currently, I got enough fuel to... How much fuel do I have here? 4,000 kilometers, so I can go wherever I want. I could just cut through to not directly. Probably got a friendly in here. I can just wait for a moment to see what the planes... Maybe I can land a good plane strike. Maybe it's going to hit the roof of one of those guys. If it's three bar rays, I take one out, and the other two get it in the face. I'm doing recon with armed ships right now. Yourself. Where did those guys go? Uh huh. 
Aha. Found you. Oh, yeah, that, that's a substantial group. Um, okay, come on. Hit the roof, hit the roof. Ah. That's the only ship that's capable to shoot back at me, which means I can keep rearming, just fix them in place and soften them up, and then Sevastopol takes them. Because they're too busy repairing our 50 hours. If I take out the Nomad, another one should be doable. Gotta rearm you guys, come on, keep going. Some nice fat 250s on the roof. Because if one of them hits in that area, you can get an ammo detonation and... Come on, baby. Oh, it just felt good. Come on, show me what you got. On fire four times and an ammo explosion and 1100 damage. Six on fires, 10 on fires, ammo explosion. Maybe he's running out of um, fire suppressant. So it might actually detonate really soon. Just 14 hours. Huh? I'll keep doing that right now because I think the anti-air defense is completely shot. Come on, baby, right on the roof, hit him. Yep. Yeah. yeah, not too much damage for such a large bomb, but on fire six, on fire seven. You see, he's catching fire. Just four hours, come on, I need more. I mean, and I gotta land one lucky hit, but I'm probably going to use missiles the next round. Because right now I got him in a stalemate. But the damage is going to be more spread out. Come on, come on. Bit more but it's just the tanks on fire that that's really irritating right now. Gotta keep doing this. Yeah, I'll try bombs this time. Until it run out. <laughs> Guys, are you ready? Come on. What's going on here? Why are they taking so much time? Bombs again. Yeah, I think that too. That, oh, no, they're leaving the place. I think they're repairing too fast for me to actually do anything about it. The enemy has been destroyed. He probably fled over here, so I could probably crash that place. They spot me, screw that, I'll do enough damage to screw. I could chase them, but then again, if there's there's still three living strike groups. I got money, I just need friends, time, and some rearmament. I could go, I could go to Tabata, I have enough fuel to get there. Yeah, I'll probably just go here, screw it. I think they can't rearm their, their cruise missiles, we have. they have to go to Kush.
Uh, the main gun has a deflective point. <laughs> it was the ammo detonation from the back. Okay, let's get what we get, what we can from here. Yeah. Is that a repair place? Oh, it is a repair place. You know, if you don't get below uh, 50 meters fall rate meters. per second, um, you're going to get into problems. Okay, can I have one more? Reveal. I still got enough fuel in that one. See, money is not a problem I'm having right now. Wait, those are still unusable, unusable in the game, are they? Oh wait, did they fix that? I'll just... Use those. <clears throat> not a nice small lot gun for my Sebastopol. Okay, where do we put this one? And when low on ammo boxes. <clears throat> Put in a spare one in case we need it. <clears throat> okay, this one's good. Yeah, I think that, uh, is it a T7? Yeah, that, that's the ones I need for this one. He's almost in garrison fighting shape, like sort of, kind of. <laughs> and this one, he needs some food for his uh, rack over here. As you can see, early in the turn campaign, I made a new variant. It's a bit longer, six uh, six shot variant. I love how expandable it is, how elegant. Like, um, it's my favorite ship I ever made. I think my most favorite one. <clears throat> This direction? Oh. No, wait, it's this direction. I'm reading it wrong. Garrison. Just a garrison, too. We fly back home. And my planes are probably busy reloading and this, this asshole is sneaking up on me. Okay. Ah. Yeah, the best option right now is just to take off and run away because... If that's a powerful strike group coming at me, maybe it's the one with the Nomad in it. Yeah, I'm just going to flee to Nod. I'm probably going to lose a lot of repair time, but hey, screw it. No, do it. Wait a minute. What? What happened to my fuel? What happened? Wait, I had a lot more fuel than that. What's going on here? Hey, 
Yeah, that's some weird bug thing. Yeah, I had a lot more in the fuel tank than this. Remember when I came here, I had like huge amounts in the fuel tank. Some, something deleted the fuel, what the hell? I just lost a, full, a huge fuel tank for, because of some stupid bug. Oh, come on. Okay, I'm just going to trample with this Vasa pull up to this point, get some loot, get some money, screw it. And I've been to this place already, killing his record. That's when my angel was overheating, he's getting me like that. Get some repairs, get some friendlies in, should be working. Check faith failed. Yeah, okay. I have that figured out. <laughs> now I got enough fuel to get to Nod, so let's see. I see this guy missing his ammo module, what the hell? Okay, you get some repairs here. You got chewed up really bad, so you keep... You mean in the Sevastopol? Yeah, it could be the bug alley. Yeah, the bug, or whatever happened to it. Oh, and I think when I approached the place, I still had more capacity in the fuel tanks than that. Also, it was a weird message. It said something with end and brackets around it when it took off while repairing. It was still repairing while it was flying, which I think was a bug, but I'm not sure. So if I put uh, reinforced plates in a Sevastopol, it might be too heavy to fly at some point. Warning. Radar emission detected. Okay, over here. There's nobody in here. Aha, uh -huh. that's a heavy striker. Yeah, that, this was guys from earlier. Get the bomb off. Well, that should slow him down for a few minutes. So yeah, they're coming for me now. Um, Speed 90, my fleet speed, actually, I'm actually slower than they are, and I don't have time for that stuff. I'm just going to fleet a nod. Warning, radar emission detected. Thermal signature detected. Oh my god, I'm flying right in the strike group. 
But it's, wait, is this, is it the rest of a strike group that's parked over here? Check out the missile. <laughs> missile Kill confirmed. Hmm, middle of damage. So was there the rest of a strike group or is the strike group just taking off and was in the area? Yeah, it's completely gone, which means there must have been a dead strike group. Which that that that's the weirdest strike group I've ever seen. That's the other guy who was chasing me anyway, so yeah. They don't like me anyway, so the missiles are coming. That's so lame when they... Uh. Okay, you got a hit. Wasp, okay, that's not too, bit of, not too big of a comment loss right now. How many of these guys have out there? Else? They're shooting at me, but I got no alien signal from them. That's weird. Ah, there you are. Going back for a pass, huh? <laughs> come on, land a nice one on the bridge. Come on, come on, come on. Does it, does it, does it? Hope that shit's going through. Now, no way he's going to sit for repairs. He's going to be up here for repairs. And I do have some spare money to rearm really quickly with some missiles. Okay, what do we have here? We got... Cool part, I have... I can put it all in the same rack. <laughs> How cool is that? It's beautiful, stocking your missiles in your ship. <laughs> okay, and you... Yeah, this one's going to take some time. See, in 14 hours I got some basic combat capabilities going again. I think I'm able to figure out that the ship that just landed doesn't get the same slot. It's, uh, okay, it's actually able to do that. Oh yeah, now you're getting some stuff on your roof.
I just don't want it to just take off. Mm -hmm. Good missile. Really accurate, too. Yeah, and I got him nailed over here. I think now I got enough firepower to take him out before they can repair. What's the range of a KH-15P? Is that... Ah, I'm almost in range. Just rearm and send a new one. And this guy should have time to repair. Because I'm busy interacting with that guy who's, who's probably in. Yeah. They won't probably touch me until he's fully repaired. Okay, 750 kilos, come on. Take it, take it right up. Even if he repairs that, the next strike might get lucky and maybe do some more component damage. 23 hours, yeah, now it's a lot longer repair time. I take about 10 or 8 hours to repair. Gotta wear that guy down. What's the thing that TA-70, it can probably carry two bombs, I just noticed. I think it can carry a higher bomb load than the other one. Yeah, it's true. They can actually carry two bombs instead of one. Three thousand O that went through, yeah, it's probably holding the ship now. <laughs> yeah, he can't repair that soon enough. So yeah, he's going to go down really soon. So I can take out Ender's Strike Group with the bombs I got. Which I got to I got to buy some of those. What's this one for? Incendiary 300. The button not working, come on. Mm. Button is broken, what the hell? Come on. No, it's working. Oh, this is bad. Now it's actually... But he's damaged. He won't attack well. Well, isn't that beautiful? Having a full rack of missiles and a strike group coming at you. Oh, yes. Oh, I'm going to enjoy this one. Wait, there's 300 millimeter rocket pods. Where can you find those? Oh, sweet rocketry. Coming from that angle, so click. Missile launched. Ah, beautiful. Look at this. Wait, I see the catcher, the seeker caught on. See how it changed direction? That's just him hitting himself. Yes. Another one. Put on the seeker early. Oh, he's really close already. Might have to fire the whole volley. Yes. Bridge gone. 
Well, there's still three boris, so they're not too easy to kill, right? Ideally, it would damage two of them, so I can just pick them up with a Sebastopol in the fight. Beautiful. Another one. <laughs> Let's give it the last one. That's an expensive shooter. Oh, I don't I mean, it was a long duel I had with that strike group so far. Like, they're really trying to come at me. Now, the problem is, um, wait a minute, didn't this guy take, like, two missiles in here? No, two different ones. Mm, okay, it's still, still critical, I could still screw it up. Because they're hard to kill, those boys. Four missiles, 12 missiles coming. I send in the badger even if I lose it but because the master ball is too important. I'm not leave me alone, leave me alone. AP range now it's bad. I'm not doing enough damage here, but I'm in the I'm in the weak point where he is, so I can carve my way through that room. Problem is I'm not too armored well over here. I'm landing good hits here, I'm peeling off the armor. Take out that engine, he's gone. I don't think the force is going to help me here. It'd be like a cool cutscene, you fly close and you have like little Jedi jumping off your ship, running around this ship, killing everybody, and, and I think they made a movie about that already. <laughs> Everything's dead except the engine. Come on. The enemy has been destroyed. Ah, what a glorious final battle for that strike group. There should be a movie made about strike group number four. All the cat and mouse stuff going on. Yeah, but as you mentioned earlier, that badger um, is the same fate as the other one. I just carry it around to um, get repaired. <laughs> so having more smaller ships that could be faster repaired and have enough less firepower than this one, but more fire enough firepower to to just enough to, to handle strike group. No, not strike groups. Um, garrisons rather. Yeah, this one's going to blow up if you. I know it. Lucky. Okay, not too bad this time. And here she is, gone. Is she dead? Number four is gone. Yeah, guys, I need to have fuel. Screw it. I need fuel. We're going to sell those. Oh, wait, that's the ones I bought. They're not going to sell those. <clears throat> How is that thing got out of common? <laughs> Just held together by a piece of arm over here. 
And I could sell this one. And then bank on and use that money to refuel my strategic capabilities, like this one and this one. Because it's going to take me a long time to, to get that thing ready to fight garrisons again. They mentioned yeah, that's where the, where the old missile rack was. So I'll probably put something up here. I mean, that's sort of some cheap armor. Then again, yeah, it's a good idea. I should put some armor in between. That's a, that's a gap in the armor that, that's getting damaged quite often. Put some random stacks on top because I need to need them for the guns probably. A big fat summer gun up here. I got my prepared ammo rack over here, so yeah. Isn't she beautiful? <laughs> what I can now do is fill that thing up with some good firepower. Now, the problem is they're out of stock on the good stuff here. To get the missile somewhere else, but this guy needs to get repaired. Two of those, one, two of those. <clears throat> The question is how much ammo is needed for rearming those. Uh, it's, yeah, he's in flying condition in the way it looks right now. So I suppose should, I should re get her some... Then again, I got in probably enough firepower if I put one extra thing... Oh wait, it's damage. Put one of those extra guns on here, then insurance against... Uh, Yeah, just keep it as this one now. <clears throat> yeah, so the goal is uh, I just trample from city to city. If they spot me, if the cruise missile comes at me, the Sebastopol is so up armored, it should be able to deflect the cruise missile coming directly at it. It's sort of like the power creep. It's like my main character is that I'm leveling up. Although I don't like level up in games, I don't like that. What I like in games is that you are the player and it's you up to your player skill to interact with your world around it. And if you want to level yourself up, make yourself better, you get an item that helps you with it. It's a better gun, better armor, better something. I never liked skill trees in games or something like that. Because in games like um, Payday 2, it's a good game, but I never liked the skill trees because um, the main problem with skill trees is there's one or two realistic ideas, and then they have to fill up the rest of the skill tree with some stupid ideas, like you are you are not using any ammo while you're standing next to the ammo box or some stupid thing like that. I got two more strike groups. If one of them comes directly at me, I probably got enough plane power to cause damage to it. That's probably the next place I need to get, far northeast of Kuva. So yeah, probably got a friendly up here. Yeah, I think that's an argument about skill trees. Oh, I would think that um, what would keep me engaged as a player is um, having items to find that you can lose again. Oh, we got a customer. Attention, visual contact. Ah, no, wait, it got through, damn it. No, my truck was there.
mean, considering it took a minute, yeah, it, it's still looking good. Don't you? <laughs> Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, come on. At least intercept one of them, come on. That's, that's just stupid. Attention, visual contact. Oh, wow. Thermal signature detected. That's stupid. How is it gets getting through all of? Uh... Oh, it's my aircraft card. That's bad. Because got a huge inventory of aircraft weapons, which I oh, it's bad. It's bad. So as I wanted to say is that um, what I like about Daisy uh, is that you don't have any skill trees. Like, if you want to make yourself better, it's usually items that you can find somewhere, and then you get them back. Eh, you can lose them, brother. <clears throat> and I think it's, it's not that rare of a player that wants that, because DayZ basically did that right from the beginning, when it came out as a mod. And it was an instant huge success, which means there was, like, a de demand in the market for a game that is realistic in a sense that uh, everything is physical, that you can lose and, and find and all that. Attention, visual contact. a huge frag group coming at me. Uh, doesn't have the courtesy to attack, he's just hitting it with a missile and then he's coming back. Okay, I'm going to take off, fly over here and get the friendly over here. Wait, I can, I can fly directly there, screw it. I could take a stop in here. Yeah, looking good. I got most of... I got this missile rack down, that's good. He flew in his own missile. I'm gonna dodge a P. Oh no 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 no! Come on! I'm gonna dodge a piece. Is coming down. I think I shot him two pieces before I got land on my ship. Okay, come on. Yeah, a bit closer. So stupid is in my dead spot, man. Yeah, that's a good point, actually. Yeah, I think rogue games are sort of built in a way that. Um, not just that you that you your character is like you lose everything when you die and you lose all the progress. It, it's also the thing that it's designed that you lose most of the time. But you're still having fun because you're constantly pressured into the challenges of the game. I think that was makes it appealing. I think. We got some good money off that. Yep. How am I supposed to land in that place? What's that? A Christmas tree over there? Ah. There's no way I can land this. No. No, there's no way. I just landed on the ship. <laughs> okay. Let's 
The good thing is I got loads of cash. The good thing is those things weren't, were not, uh, were in the hangar dock to be built before the thing exploded, so I still got them as free stuff lying around. So what I need is, is get missiles. Cart, cart my ship around until I get a strike group, hit him with a lot of missiles, and the Sebastopol eats him up. That's a good plan, I got money for it, I just need to get the missiles. I could buy myself something to fight, but then again... Oh, a complete aircraft carrier. Could buy all my cash and I got a complete aircraft carrier that's completely fielded and I could take out a strike group right there. Now, should I... Should I, um... Should I spend it or not? I don't think that the losing part is fun, it's just that, um... The only fun in the game doesn't come from, from winning all the time. Because if you always win, it's boring. Because there's no challenge. And if you... Um, it, it's the, the emotions and the situations that are created that make you improvise and think. I think that's what makes <clears throat> really hard games appealing to, in a way. Yeah, should I trade all my cash for a completely functioning aircraft carrier and use all my air power, which I have ready to just drop on the enemy? I think it's... Looks like a good idea from him. I'll do it. It's great. Oh, now I got the damn power to find them and take them out. Wait, 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 wait. No, it's just this player. Not error, well. Warning, radar emission detected. Show me where you are. No, no, no. Yeah, just gotta find him. He, he can't be in that cone. He has to be in that area, but why can't I find him? You think if he gets close? I got so many planes I can throw at him right now. He can. Yeah, he's right on top of me. Hmm, I got a full arsenal of whatever can throw at him. Okay, the slow ones, you're sending in some bombs. Fast ones, you send in heavy missiles, and here we go, take it. Mm, some damage here, some... Yeah, okay, if they go for Sebastopol right now, it's going to be hard. But then again, I could take off and go for the next city, get a friendly. Speed 90, I'm speed 84. Mm, this is bad. Means I can't get away from him in time. Oh, wait, I could. If I'm just one... he's He, he catches me up at one kilometer per hour. I could actually get to, to the place and... Yeah, try it. Try to catch me if you can. <laughs> no, he's actually chasing me. <laughs> and he has a six six kilometer advantage. No. It was a good hit, I think. Should slow him down a bit. Fuel tanks burning, losing fuel range. He might get stranded and get destroyed before he gets too close.
Oh, he's actually trying to get back now. Not so tough now, huh? <laughs> Maybe he knows the fuel range, uh, he's trying to get back. Because, you know, the good thing is I know where he is, so if he's, he's going to park in it to repair, my other planes are rearmed, then he's going to get it. Uh huh. I think what happened, uh, you hit a target destroyed. I think uh, his fuel range is busted and he crashed, or maybe that one ship is crashed. I'm not sure if the whole strike group is gone. I guess we see that in a moment. Softening him up in case. Actually, the rest is a waste of ammo. So Vastable can take him. But I really want to know what the strike group is doing over there. If it got destroyed or not. Because maybe the whole group didn't have enough fuel and he got caught in the middle and then I cut down the fuel range he had and he wasn't able to get back. I want to take a look at that right now. He's not in the area. So yeah, I think he got destroyed. So I'm going to mark this guy as dead. Maybe the whole group ran out of fuel in the middle of nothing and just... At least that's my theory. So I'm going to mark him as dead. And it would be an elegant way to take it out because it would have been a huge battle to, to fight them manually. And I just uh, caught him in the open without fuel. Hey, Wong. Hey, Demos. Um, when I'm in the middle of a fight, I tend to not look at the phone. I'm too focused. Well, I think it would almost work as a, as a mobile game. But the main screen, I think it's too big for, for a mobile game. Very good way. Take out the strike group by just drawing it in the open. I think that's why he wanted to turn away, because his fuel range was, was gone. So he turned back to the city. I landed um, the bomb on the fuel tank, and the combined fuel tank of the place was... You hear deep roaring boom? The, the deep echo behind one of the largest guns. <laughs> yeah, tablet, yeah, it would work. Now, the only problem is in real time combat, you would have to constantly like uh, have the finger on one direction. Or maybe you have a not sure box. So you have some side controls with your thumbs, because I'm, I'm not really too experienced with mobile games. I barely played it myself. But I think it, there would be a way to make it work. It would be like the tactile thing, like having a radar screen to click buttons and see it like swipe all around. That would be really fun to have. Yeah, we busted the whole strike group by just stranding him like that. I think it looks a bit too high quality for Flash. Like you notice the animations and the explosions, you don't get their beauty in, in Flash, I think. If you look at the Flash game, for example, Among Us, if you know that game, that's, that's a pure Flash game, I think. It has that, that ugly, um, very basic font and the overly thick um, frames around uh, speech bubbles and, and the text bubbles you can type in. I think I really turned the last battle around by just stranding him like that. That's a good tactic I need to keep in mind for the next time. Come on, baby. Oh, don't drift, don't drift. Come on, don't do that. No, no, no. Down, soften up, soften it, soften it. Point. Yep, just a classic swastika with some modifications on top. <laughs> yeah, all the extra guns are mounted. Oh, that, that's critical damage here. That engine is gone, then you start, because the thing is built, I think, oh, it says even low thrust. It can actually, it cannot keep itself flying, so. 
Okay, little one, you need to f get fixed like real good. Okay, how long it takes? There's just one strike group, so yeah. If it finds me, it can come. I I'll wait for it. This one I'm going to mount when it's fully repaired, and those guys are probably stuck in the rearm loop because. Um... Yeah, just I could I could make make them lose some ammo because if a cruise missile comes in, that part actually helps because sometimes you survive a hit, but bottom ammo it's just that's just not necessary. Need the guns on, yeah. I mean, if the missile comes in, yeah, it might, might be some, might be some use to it. I gotta put one piece on, so it's so it's um, so it's saving the new configuration. Might as well extend the. Um, yeah, demos always play um, hard mode. This Waspo looks like kind of muscular. Notice how she looks like. Um, like she walked out really hard. Like she went to prison and walked out and came out like super buff and all that. <laughs> but basically at the beginning I removed the armor rack, uh, the silo, put the six gun over here and then started decorating up top with improvised gunnery. <laughs> and that gap is basically for the ammo. Oh look, a strike group. Probably the last one, huh? So use one, two, three, four, five. Yep, five down. Could actually do it. if they attack me, I can harass them with planes so they get stuck and stranded like that. I think hard mode, I made it to the exit two times. But most of the times uh, I haven't. <laughs> Okay, I just need to go to the restroom for two minutes. So I'm going to mute my mic. The, the game screen will remain as it is. I'll be back in two minutes. Okay, so I should be back now. <clears throat> we got one strike group on the air.
And I got all the capacities for my airplanes to fight them. I'm just going to intercept them with planes as it gets closer. Wait a minute, didn't I get a... I wasn't supposed to get a friendly boy in this area. He's in range here. Chase him when he's getting out. Up here and then bang, bang, bang. Damage him really hard. Then he's going to be forced to attack to... Yeah, probably can destroy him completely. Wait, maybe I have better bombs to use. No bombs in this shop. <clears throat> Yeah, I gotta use what I got here. <clears throat> the far northeast of Cuba. Who is the far northeast? He has nothing, he has nothing, so it has to be in Kush. Yeah, sending in what I got. Oh yeah, he's here. Now the problem is he does garrison and probably um, might be too much anti-aircraft fire coming at me. But then again, I might damage him really bad up here. Well, I can wait until he's closer and Kush. I'll fly back and wait until he's in Kush. Then he's isolated on his own and I'm closer for direct attack. Still not moving, <clears throat> and he has no goal to move over there, so he's probably going to remain there. That might be the only way to get him is to actually stay there. Really hope they're going to aim for the right ship here. Yes, come on, hit the bridge. I spread the damage out, it's good. Mm, minimal damage, but this one, the trajectory in this direction is towards the bridge. Yeah, he took some serious damage, so yeah. Rearm, go back, and I can nail him down in this place. That's the last strike. Yeah, I know we're here, but I can't do anything about it. Yeah, I actually need to upgrade the thrust on that ship to actually or remove some uh, stuff. Probably remove that airland, put it up here, and remove that entire tower because pff, I need some weight reduction going on here. You remove a fuel tank, put a, put a big fat thruster down. This thrust weight 1.0, that's like, if in combat something goes slightly wrong, one thrust overheats or some damage, I'll drop like a rock, so I can't fight. So, <clears throat> Got to reduce the fuel tank, put a nice big fat thruster in here. Oh. 
One second, I have to go to the phone. Um, AFK, one minute. Okay, now I'm back in the game. Um, there is a problem having here right now. That thing can barely carry itself. So I'm going to lose some of the fuel tanks and put a nice fair thrust on it. Oh wait, I can't even buy thrusters. Hmm. I mean, if that's the last, I just leave it as it is. Is that if that's the last strike group, then I can repair as long as I want. I think so. Yeah, just. Got... Wait, do they have the range for that? Like, how are they... Oh, they do. They do actually have the range for that. The has destroyed. <laughs> oh, right in the ammo box. Attention. Oh. Contact. No, this is not good. <laughs> hey, Flammy. Oh. oh, no. Come on. This is just bad. Yeah. Yeah, I hit the other ship. That's good. Yeah, I hit the other one. Okay. <clears throat> Yo, I need at least one of you guys ready right now. Oh, my God. Don't hit the Sevastopol. Yeah, he's aiming for the aircraft carrier. No, my aircraft carrier is gone. <laughs> Shit. Shit, that, that's my projection. Oh. Now we got each other deadlocked like this. Ah. Okay, we get some fuel and we go the fuck out. Attention. Okay. Yeah, this stupid missile might end the campaign, and I almost had the last sec group. I had it. Ah. Oh. Just because one cruise missile went through and hit the ammo. Bo okay, come on. The has been destroyed. Eh. I'm still standing, bitch. Yeah, I just gotta get out of range here. <laughs> I'll come back and get this guy eventually, sometime. I'll just, go, I'll just go around, collect loot, and get myself an aircraft carrier. Ah. If you just joined Flemmy, I had it. That's the last strike group. And the fifth one, I basically destroyed without fighting it directly, because my aircraft had... Um, I think they were chasing me, and then they were turning around because they were running out of fuel, so they went, bent, went back to the base. But on the way back, I hit him with a plane. And it burned up some fuel, I think, and this track group deleted itself on the map. Because you get the message, like, destroyed in the, in, in the main campaign screen, which means the track group disappeared. And then I had this one down. I was parked here, and I was just kept bombing him with, with um, planes. And as I'm going back to refueling, I'm getting spotted because I'm t spending too much time here. And I'm within range of the missile strikes from Urkesh. And one of them hit me right in the ammo box. And had an aircraft carrier with planes and everything, and yeah, but the planes could have intercepted it. I had the tools for it, but they were rearming. That went really well this time, except this this one stupid missile turned it around. We gotta repair and collect loot here. Oh my god, look at this mess. I mean, I got planes, I could build myself a little aircraft rack and just... Yeah, 
if he doesn't chase me, he can't do much to me. So I sort of got money, so that's not too bad. Yes. Yeah, that's right. Screw it. It's probably five minutes of, of shift holding, but well, then I can chat in the meantime. Oh, he's chasing me. Okay, well. Can't get away anyway, so. Almost had this guy in the bag. Almost had him in the bag. I was bombing him, and it was just going back to the next bombing run, rearming, and then I got spotted, and I'm in his range of his missiles. Ah, I almost had him, and I'm not in a position to fight. I lost my ammo box; they're all gone. So I can't, I can't really fight him anyway. Such bad luck, just almost won the fucking campaign. I mean, then win it, I still have to go to Kiva, but. There should be a hidden city in here, but I can't outrun him. I mean, I could if I damaged him right now with a missile, which I ha if I had one, or if at least I had an aircraft carrier. Oh my god. So yeah, that's probably it. <clears throat> Almost had him. I mean, there's a minimal chance as well that. But... Even if it goes to hell, uh, it's, it was still a good campaign. A lot of interesting tactics going on. And didn't make too many mistakes. I think some pieces are gone, some guns are gone, or the other ones have, have ammo again, so yeah. But this one goes down. You're going down. Okay, everybody out. <laughs> Save yourselves, get out. <laughs> oh wait, we got no crew pods left, so yeah. Almost had the sixth one. I had him almost. Almost had him. <laughs> I think it was just the, the combination of the bad timing that um, he spotted me at that moment. He had missile capacities and he was firing them. And that one missile got through and it hit the ammo box. It's a cascade of worst cases going on here. If the first missile wouldn't have hit my ammo box, I would have taken the damage. And if the aircraft carrier wouldn't have gotten hit by the second missile, I had five, six, seven planes rearming to send in the next strike to take him out. That would have probably won, the, won it. But, ah. Almost got him this time. <laughs> but one important thing I learned is that I need to focus more on, on aircraft power. Because you can basically destroy an, um, or damage an enemy strike group so hard that they fail to get back to the main base. So if you catch them flying a lot distant, you can basically take them out by just um, killing the fuel supply. And I need to scale down the honey badges. If, if I'm only using them, because the honey badge I'm using right now, the 55k thousand one, it's a bit too good for fighting garrisons, and it's a bit too weak to fighting strike groups. So I think I'm carrying around 20, 20 or 10k um, of the price for nothing. Yeah, well, using a nuke at the head would have been a good idea, saving one for this point. But then again, a missile carrier, see, it's always something, some tiny part missing where the whole thing goes through. <laughs> 
But hey, I got five strike groups in the last one. It was three or four Boris and the Nomad. And you should have seen the battle over the, the fourth strike group Fleming. They were chasing me, and at some point I was fleeing from them with 84 speed, 84 kilometers per hour. He was chasing me with 90 kilometers per hour. And then I kept sending planes at him to slow him down. That was, that was really entertaining. Yeah, the other reason change in tactics the last few games is that I do not strip down my thrust, but at the beginning I actually use it as a combat ship. My calculation is if the enemy has two or three strike group ships, like normal Bori ships, like the, the medium, the tall ones, the Swastopol can take out three of them with some damage. Light to medium damage. But if it's four of them, then I'm taking too much damage, and if one of the main engine is gone, then, I've, then you have a problem. So that's sort of the... Um, if the, if the strike group is beaten down to two enemy ships, then the Swastopol... There's no issues. <clears throat> because I upgraded with all different guns on the deck, like 37s, 130s, and the more uh, guns you have, the easier it's going to be to take out um, the missile strikes. Yeah, this one almost worked out. <laughs> Is anybody excited for the new Tarkov trailer coming out? I think it's at 10 p.m. or something there's going to be a Tarkov trailer. I might read a new patch with some new stuff in it, so it's always exciting. But um, when I started streaming out today, I actually uh, planned to stream Red Dead Redemption online. The problem was I can't get the if I'm using OBS for stream capture, uh, my mouse pointer doesn't show up for me in the screen, which is not too much of a problem with the game because you don't use much, you don't use much mouse pointering anyway in this game. Yeah, this was a good campaign, but um, I'm not actually, I'm not even too angry about the end of it because everything went quite well. There was a lot of situations where it could have gone worse, but they made good decisions. I had some luck at some point. I had 50k left, and I lost my aircraft carrier. Then I came to the town, and there was a free aircraft carrier, not free, for 47,000. And that's the one I used for Strike Group 6, but yeah, then this happened. <clears throat> so I'll probably end the stream right now here because there was a rather intense comment and might be streaming I'm not sure if I might be streaming Tarkov tomorrow if, if there's a new patch coming out or maybe I'll try another game maybe I'll try Red Dead Redemption and the way I play Red Dead Redemption it's not about like grinding missions or all that I'm more like the immersive experience just riding around hunting animals and stuff like that So to everybody who joined in, as always, uh, thanks for watching.